In this tutorial we're going to carry on looking at a bit of sequencer um, and just look at uh, some of the other tracks that we could use and really working towards the fade track. So oh, just carrying on working on the sequence I was working on before. Um, over here we've got this plus on the track and we can add different kinds of th things in there. So we have audio track, uh, we have an event track where you can actually trigger off a blueprint event, um, camera cut track if we wanted to add another camera and cut between that and this. Play rate track, where we can actually change the playback rate of the sequence itself. Um, Subscene tracks are useful if you have a couple of people collaborating on a project. Um, so we could have an animated just working on an animation track, uh, an audio, a person working on the audio track, and um, those can be brought back into a sequence. So uh, useful more for teams than individuals. The level visibility track, you can actually load in and hide uh, or show the visibility of uh, another level within that. Uh, down at the bottom we've got media track, so we can bring in media information. So if you have a video playing or something like that, we can have that working. Uh, what I'm going to look at, uh, be looking at in this tutorial is the fade track. So I'm going to add the fade track in. So with the fade track we have one value. We have uh, this fade value here is a value of either 0 or 1. So it kind of works reverse to what you would imagine. Basically a value of 0 means that we're not showing the fade track. A value of 1 means that we are showing the fade track. So this is a fade to black here. So if I, would, if I was to go in and do that, you can see that we're bringing this all the way out to black. Bring that back to 0. And we're actually showing that information now. Okay. So say we want to, rather than just cut in between these clips, we want to actually fade in and out of these clips. So maybe on this last one. So I'll have this fading in instead. So let me just go to this marker. Going to zoom into this a little bit. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of work backwards with this. I'm going to go into this fade track. I'm just going to create a new key at this point. And I'm going to set this to be a value of 1. So I'm going to have this completely faded out. I'm then going to just go back a couple of frames. And I'm going to create another keyframe. This time I'm going to set this to a value of 0. And then we're going to fade out. And at this point I'll do the same. Set a keyframe. Set this to a value of 0 again, and there we've got our fade in. Okay, let's just play that. And we have that kind of effect. That's another one at the end. So let's say we get to that position and then we have a fade out. Uh, so I'm going to create a keyframe with a value of 0. Then just push out. So another keyframe and let's set this to a value of 1 again. And then we're going to have a fade out. Okay. And as with anything, we can go in and we can set the interpolation of this. So let's grab these two. Let me just zoom into these. So if we want to be this, uh, we want this to be come a bit faster. Oops. Let me just go back to this fade here. So what I actually want to do, um, you saw there as I was bringing that, this is bringing this in, which is actually going to create some problems there. So let me just do that. So what I want to do is I want to break this tangent. So up here we have this uh, use broken tangents. If I click on that, that just means that I can move this one without affecting the other. So if I want this to fade out, I'll start fading in a little more quickly. 
Let's grab those two again. I'm going to have that doing that. So that's just simply the fade track. So quite a quick one there, um, but could be useful for you.